On Monday the 10th of October 2005, Ardman's second ever feature film, Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, had just reached the top of the US box office, and celebrations were in order for the renowned animation company. However, this day would instead be remembered by Wallace and Gromit's creators for a very different reason. It was on this date that Ardman's props, sets, and other invaluable assets from their previous 30 years of productions were lost in a blaze of flames, as the three-story warehouse that archived them burned to the ground in an unforeseen disaster. It's believed that the fire broke out at 5.30 a.m., so nobody was in the building at the time. This is obviously fortunate, although had the fire occurred later in the day, it likely would have been reported to emergency services sooner, before causing any serious damage to either people or the assets. Alas, this was not the case, as due to the early hours in which it took place, the fire was not noticed until half an hour later, when the building and its treasures were beyond the point of saving. So, what exactly was lost in the fire, and was anything salvaged? Well, due to Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were-Rabbit literally premiering days before, all of the sets and figures from the new movie were being exhibited elsewhere in Bristol, in aid of the film's promotion. So, thankfully, the props from my own personal favourite Aardman production are still around today. A set piece from their first feature film, Chicken Run, also survives, having been on display at the Imperial War Museum in London at the time. But unfortunately, this means that the props and set pieces from any Ardman production prior to The Curse of the Were-Rabbit were caught in the blaze. And by that, I don't just mean burnt, I mean completely wiped out, with flames reportedly reaching heights of 100 feet. Nothing was salvaged from the building. The reason being that the structure itself was old and unstable, so the firemen opted to fight the fire from outside for their own safety, which was subsequently more time-consuming. Though it's lucky that they did, as all three floors of the Victorian warehouse soon collapsed into a heap of charred rubble. So it's probably quite clear now why nothing survived. The longer I've spent researching what would have been lost, the more painful it is to think about. With all of the physical elements from A Grand Day Out in 1989, the wrong trousers in 1993, and a close shave in 1995, all being lost. Everything you see in those movies, if deemed worthy, were placed in that building as part of the archive. The purpose of which was obviously to preserve these pieces of history for generations to come, which is definitely not what has transpired. So, who is actually responsible for the fire? Well, it isn't so much who, as what. As on the following Friday, investigators ruled out arson as the cause, meaning that no one had deliberately burnt down the building. Instead, putting the blaze down to a faulty electrical appliance, which is not specified. Knickers. Though the Assistant Chief Fire Officer was quoted as saying that the devastation could have all been avoided had the building been equipped with a sprinkler system. So, is the company itself responsible for the loss of its assets? The answer is, to put it simply, no. As Ardman were in fact renting the building due to its close proximity to their studio complex, this puts the blame partially on whoever was renting out the warehouse, as due to the building's age and clear fragility, precautions should have been in place, such as the aforementioned sprinklers, in order to prevent this kind of thing from ever happening. It's worth mentioning that it's not just pieces from Wallace and Gromit that were lost that day, as the archives also included animated figures and props from the likes of Creature Comforts and even as far back as Morph. These are some of the few pictures that exist online of original Ardman figures on display, which I found on this old blog post written by James Henry in 2005, who had done some work for the company and was thus permitted to enter their HQ. He speaks of the fire and remarks that he hopes that the figures pictured were not in the warehouse at the time of the fire, 
So it would seem that these figures could have survived the blaze had they remained in this HQ as opposed to the warehouse, but it's not clear when exactly these pictures were taken. So the displays could have easily been moved around since, taking characters in and out of the storage facility. So their fate ultimately remains unknown. As noted by Ardman's co-founder, Dave Sproxton, who was interviewed following the fire, perhaps the biggest loss is the original sketches and storyboards that preceded the films themselves, which could have provided great insight as to how much work goes into such remarkable productions, from early concepts to the finished product. He also added that another significant loss was a complete exhibition of the three original Wallace and Gromit short films, which was only recently brought back to the UK warehouse after a tour of Japan. It's this part that I find particularly devastating, as had this exhibition remained in Japan for a while longer, the majority of items from perhaps the most iconic Hardman productions would have remained unscathed. But alas, it's specifically mentioned in an article that the original models of Feathers McGraw from The Wrong Trousers and Shaun the Sheep from A Close Shave, along with around 30 Wallaces and 40 Grommets, were all housed in metal cases within the warehouse. So even if recovered, the containers and contents were both melted beyond recognition. Wallace and Gromit's creator, Nick Park, said it was dreadful for the company, but comparatively not a big deal, in reference to other catastrophes involving people as opposed to objects. Although this was a very bold thing for Nick Park to say, it must have been truly harrowing to see such a large chunk of his legacy quite literally go up in flames. It's noted that the actual physical copies of the original films survived also, as they were stored separately from all of the props. Which brings me to my conclusion, which is, although these iconic items no longer exist physically, they do live on in the films that they were originally made for, and subsequently in the minds of people who have been impacted by these productions in various ways, and I've no doubt they'll continue to do so, for a very long time. Yeah, so I always try to cover obscure topics that aren't talked about elsewhere, and I don't think that's ever been truer than it has today, as when searching for information on the Ardman fire, there's a handful of articles, but they're literally all from and around the date that it happened, in 2005, which was 16 years ago apparently, good god. So this ended up actually being a bit of a nostalgia trip, as the old BBC News article is still formatted the way it was originally, all gloriously squashed up and low res, which was cool to see. This kind of backfired however, as any reference images of the fire are also ludicrously small, so apologies for that. But yeah, there's been little to no reflections on this incident since it happened that I've came across, so let's change that with this video. If you enjoyed, or at least learnt some interesting stuff, I'd really appreciate you liking the video, and if you want to see more Wallace and Gromit content, subscribe, and let's get some discussions going in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching.